Hey, and welcome to video number five of the advanced course for NADN. In this video, we'll be covering everything you need to know about the error workflow and an example workflow that you can implement in your instance today. In the beginner course, we briefly covered the error trigger node. This node returns information such as the node that errored, the reason for the error, the link to that execution, and much more information. Using this set of information about the error, we can construct a standard error message. For example, this one. Here we have the name of the workflow, just failed, the execution ID, the type of error, and the link to the failed execution. This makes it really easy to see what kind of error occurred and quickly access the execution history of that specific workflow. We could even use the error workflow to attribute an urgency score or priority level depending on the type of error. For example, a 500 error would be low because it means that the service that we are using is unavailable and there is most likely nothing we can do about it. Whereas a 400 error might be much higher on the priority list because this won't fix itself over time. If you have multiple users in your AnyDen instance, you might have different owners for different workflows. These owners will be the best person to contact if you need to update or maintain workflows. You can use a tag system to assign a user to contact for support on any given workflow. Here we can see that these four workflows have owner tags, Maxim, Anna, and Paul. Let's look at how we can build an error workflow to notify the right NADN user when a workflow has an error by recreating the workflow we can see below. Briefly, before we jump into it, what this workflow does is it gets the error of the workflow. It goes and enriches information about the given workflow, for example, getting the owner. Then it looks up in a table who the associated owner is, and then it notifies the associated owner through Slack or through Gmail. Together, let's build this uh, advanced error workflow. Uh, we're gonna start off with uh, an error trigger. So as we mentioned in the course, the error trigger is going to give you information about the workflow that failed, uh, as well as the node, the execution, um, everything you need to go back to the workflow and uh, make any corrections. The first thing we're gonna wanna do here is get more information about the workflow itself. We already have some information, but uh, because we're going to be routing the error message to the owner, it's gonna be a lot better if we get the tags on the workflow. So what we're gonna do here is add the NADN node, and I want to get a workflow. Uh, here we have the workflow ID. So um, when I'm going to get the ID, I'm gonna get this one. But uh, for the purpose of this exercise, let's work with uh, another workflow that has uh, an owner name. Then using the edit fields node, we can uh, get the owner and put it top level. So workflow owner. And here I'm going to get the owner oh, here. tags, name, maxims. So this is going to be our owner tag. And I want to put it uh, top level. So we have it here. Work for the owner maxim. It's going to be a lot easier to access. Then we obviously still need the information from the error trigger. So we're going to merge by position. Here we have the information about the workflow and here we have the information about the error. While we're at it, uh, I'm going to add a little error message. So here again, I'm gonna add an edit fields and include an error message. So here as a string, 
and add the expression. So this is just a little work um, error message that I wrote earlier. Here by merging, I'm gonna have everything I need. Then we need to figure out, okay, now that we have the owner and all the information, uh, we need to figure out for that specific owner, how do we contact them? So I already made, to save us some time, a little code node. This node just contains a list of items with the name of the person, the name of the owner, and their associated email. So as we saw last time, we're just gonna use again another merge to enrich. So this time combine again by position. Sorry, here combined by fields because we need in input one, that I need to execute. In input one, we wanna match the name to input two, the workflow owner. So here, it'll give me the email. And from here, I can decide to just send an email, for example, send a message to the workflow owner on your workflow, little typo, and include the message that we added at the beginning. Perfect. And now depending on which error has the workflow, it'll send to the right person. If you want to take this to the next level, uh, what we could do here is not only have an associated email, but we could have an associated um, workflow ID and use this as well as the execute workflow to uh, pass here the workflow ID of the owner. And that way the owner can deal with however, uh, deal with the workflow error however they want. Um, they could have some logging, they could have a message on Slack or on Teams or an email. And that means that every, worst, every person is going to be able to uh, manage this however they see fit. Thanks for listening to the fifth video of the AnyDen Advanced course, where we covered the trigger error node and an example of an error workflow.